<laughs> How's this for a cast of thousands? Look who's here in New York. This is only Kevin Klein from Cry Freedom, Sophie's Choice, The Big Thrill, I mean The Big Chill. <laughs> Silverado and Violets Are Blue. He's here in the company of Michael Palin, who's a member, as you know, of Monty Python's troupe. On the loop from Los Angeles is John Cleese and Jamie Lee Curtis. How did she get in this crowd? Welcome them, the stars of A, a Fish Called Wanda. Say hello. Hi. That's, that's the end of our show, and thank you all <laughs> thank very you. much. Uh, can you hear us, John and Jamie Lee? He can't hear you. His hearing aid isn't working, but I can hear you fine, and I'll translate. Very good. <laughs> what? What did she say? I said I would tell them that I can hear you, and then I'll tell them what you're saying. Yeah, it's about two minutes past ten. <laughs> uh, what is that on your cheek? <laughs> This is the same as the kiss that I have on the poster for the movie. He hasn't washed his face since I kissed him. I have that effect on people. <laughs> um, having having... Uh, seen your beloved movie titled uh, A Fish Called uh, Wanda, I can, uh, I'm pleased to say that this is a very entertaining uh, comedy, which, if you, I assume you won't be upset, has a... Uh, which is British in origin. British in origin, quite right. Now, what that means is you're doing things in this film that we do not see in American films. Like what? Well, <laughs> in American films, we, what we do in American films is blow people's heads off, for example. Uh -huh. yeah. But I'll tell you this, we would never kill three Yorkies in one movie. Bad business. It was an accident. <laughs> it was an accident. You have to realize that. I am fascinated with how aggressive, irreverent, and bold is this script in ways I think uh, escape the creative artist here in our nation called America. Do you share at all any... Uh, how do you feel about the observation, Kevin? Come on. Oh! <laughs> It's true, the English, the English are very refined and cultivated and restrained, uh, with, a, with a few exceptions. And boring, yes. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I actually, I've never, uh, people have talked about this being British humor, or Monty Python being British humor, and I guess because they're British and, and humorous, it's British humor, but I, it's all, I've always gotten it as, it's funny. I mean, what's, I think what's, what makes you laugh has got to be universal. So, right. while it is, of course, distinctively British, it makes me laugh, so I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't know what he's talking about. I think, yeah. John, do you know what I, I'm it's talking funny. about? I've never been able to figure out what he's talking about. <laughs> it's, he's usually talking about himself, but I don't listen to that bit. But the rest uh, beats me. Yeah. Uh, now, did, uh, and Jamie Lee, how did you get on with these uh, talented uh, men that surround you in this whole film? Well, because I'm totally untalented, it was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I really, I, I learned a lot, and um, I'm even learning how to spell better. Thank you. Um, well, this has got to be, uh, well, I don't want to say, certainly one of the most exciting efforts of your uh, career, Jamie Lee. You're very central to this film. You're in every scene, and you're in bed with three of these four guys. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 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 uh. We never got to bed. I think it was on the carpet or just by the front door. We didn't actually get Hi, as far as the bed. Hi. Hi, Michael. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Hi, Jamie. Hi, John. I was the best. Hi, <laughs> Let me just talk for you a minute here about uh, Brother Cleese. Listen to this. You're a writer, director, producer, and actor. Uh, is that, that's the style, is it, in, uh, in uh, Great Britain? I think uh, while we certainly do have our writers and our actors, they are not as... Uh, they're not as likely to be found in as many places here as in your native um, homeland. I think <clears throat> what actually happens, Phil, is that when you start, you start as a writer, and then you get a chance to perform, so you do a bit of that too. And then eventually, you want a little bit more control, and inevitably you take on more and more and more. <laughs> so that on, on this one, I finished up with about uh, three and a half hats on. That's why we have such a, you know, unemployment problem in England. <laughs> Everyone's doing the same role, you know. I mean, he did everything. He did makeup. He did a lot of the costumes. Uh, he also he produced. He also is, uh, produced industrial films. Yeah, 
Oh, yes, yes. And Fascinating, pieces. isn't it? This, and you wasn't also this started as an industrial film. <laughs> yes, it kind of mushroom. <laughs> Comedy crept in and John couldn't control it. Uh, Kevin, uh, from uh, Sophie's Choice, what a film. Oh, Thank you. Uh, what a novel. Which one uh, were you? Uh, <laughs> that was the other one. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen about Kevin here. Two Tonys, no small achievement, a Drama Desk Award and an Obie Award. You are hot, kid. Thank you. And uh, you're dismissed. Mm. <laughs> Michael. There are actually two Drama Desk Awards. But, you know, Michael stutters in this film. Catching a bit of the glow here. Well, yes. This boy is hot. He's very hot. God, he's boiling. Whoa. Whoa. There are actually Ooh. two Drama Desk Awards. Ooh. I don't know. Oh, I, I'm sorry. We'll get that. I, I, uh, let me correct that. Two Drama Desk Awards. You can make yes. a toast off this guy. Uh, <laughs> three, maybe. And no, you no. stutter in this film yeah. very well. <laughs> well, f thank you. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that is no small achievement either. You can uh, run away with the scene and lose the meaning of the scene if you're mm. not careful. This is a way to upstage everybody, and you succeed well, in not doing it. actually, that. I mean, with a stammer, in fact, you depend very much on your, other, your fellow actors because you start a line, and, and I, I finish very few lines in the movie. I start a lot of lines, I finish very few. So I'm talking about the... the, 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 the Dog, g -g -g and you really do depend on your fellow actor to come in. I mean, if Kevin doesn't come in with the line, then I'm dead. See, I'm, you know, I'm just going on, blah, 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 blah. But uh, it's, it's, uh, no, it was interesting to do a stammer because my father had a stammer. And I, what I didn't want to do is in this movie just sort of like bring it in as a sort of joke, which just, that's all the character does is stammer. So in fact, he has, uh, he doesn't stammer all the time when he's happy, when he's with animals. He's very happy and relaxed, which is what stammering's all about. It's only a response to pressure. And it's only when he gets French fries stuck up his nose and he's lashed to a chair, he's tipped head down, head first, he has a pear stuck in his mouth, and, and Kevin eats all his pets, um, <laughs> that he is under a bit of pressure, and then he can't speak too well, which I think is reasonable, don't you? Yes. No? Do I hear uh, a no? Uh, let me I show them. Is the first clip uh, John Cleese hanging out the window? <laughs> let me just share with this uh, audience just a piece of this uh, film with which I assume you'll become familiar at a later date. Uh, this is quite a scene. Here's the barrister being, uh, how shall we say, uh, placed on the uh, outside of a window while being held by his ankles by none other than Kevin Klein. Listen to the barrister in this moment of life or death. Roll the film. Oh, I love you, Archie. I've loved you ever since the first second I saw you. Oh. What was that? What? Your brother didn't bring you here this time, did he? No. He's no idea? He doesn't have a clue. What? When he heard your daughter's name was Portia? Yeah? He said, why did they name her after a car? <laughs> ah! <laughs> I love the way you laugh. Oh, I love you. You're funny. Mmm. How come a girl as bright as you could have a brother who's so... Don't call me stupid. <laughs> Mike! Uh, Jesus Christ! Come on! I'll deal with you later. What have you done with her? She's all right. Otto! Now, apologize. Otto! What? Apologize. Are you totally deranged? Apologize. All right, all right, I apologize. Really sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I apologize unreservedly. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> You sat around the pool and that scene evolved, did it? <laughs> I think yes, John I... has always wanted to act upside down. John? Yeah, I can't remember where I got the idea from, but uh, I remember when I told Charlie Crichton, this marvelous old guy who directed the movie, he said, at last, John, you've had a visual idea. <laughs> uh, Charlie Crichton is also the, uh, was the man who gave us uh, the Lavender Hill mob. That's right. right. He is also 77 years old. Right. 78 this year. And he directed this film. Yeah. That is it was his first, first Slowly, feature. very slowly. <laughs>
<laughs> it was his first feature for 21 years. And when the uh, script called for a gorgeous, sexy, talented, uh, bright young woman. They called <laughs> Kathleen Turner, but she was unavailable. Uh, <laughs> uh, who, uh, who approached you, Jamie Lee? Did John call or? No, Kathleen called, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she said she just read this great script. And uh, she wasn't going to do it, neither was Daryl Hannah or Rebecca De Mornay, and so that maybe I should. Uh -huh. Did she? <laughs> if I paid them to do it. <clears throat> you know, you were always very clever. I don't know if you were this fast, however, before you made this film. Have these that's, guys... Th that's because of their brilliant influence, and I'm so lucky to be a part of working with them. <laughs> were you... Uh, were You've you respected as a uh, contributor to an idea, or was this a rigid, disciplined, don't argue with the playwright description? Well, I've never had an experience where somebody actually lets you participate. And once you've had that experience like I did on this movie, it'll be very difficult to work with anybody again. So this is it, I guess. So, <laughs> thank you very much, and I enjoyed working with you. No, he, they, really, they really allowed um, a lot of freedom, and it, and it gave me a lot of confidence. And... Um, was there? Is, the, is it different working in England? I mean, well, it's, it's much, it's, it's much more boring in England. It um, is. Yes, it's boring and it smells badly there. <laughs> but um, she's from LA, I, you know. <laughs> but on the whole, you know, uh, I mean, it's basically sort of the same thing. They they speak with very, you know, and, and it, it, they think they're very smart and they're not. And it's just, it's okay. You get over that sort of like I'm better than you attitude, and then. It's just everybody's pretty the same. Uh, right? there, there is that attitude. Uh, John, how about working here? Uh, how do you, what are your feelings about, uh, is it different for you working here? Well, no, the only time I, two times I've worked here, I must say they were, they were quite exceptional experiences doing uh, Silverado with Kevin down in Santa Fe. And I was lucky enough to be working with Larry Kasdan, who's a very good friend anyway. And that was genuinely a marvelous crew, an extraordinary experience. And then doing Cheers, <sighs> about 18 months ago was an equally good one so <clears throat> i think if you just if you're lucky you're lucky and um, the other thing i'd like to say is that uh, during the 1870s the main oh, import of uh, bismarck's social policy was to transfer the uh, enfranchisement to the working classes in order to suppress the liberal tendencies that would fascinating isn't it yeah. <laughs> We are in New York City and Los Angeles, having perfected the theory of bilocation, uh, with John Cleese, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Klein, and Michael Palin, and we're also here with 250 of the most talented people to be found in a studio audience anywhere in the universe. And we'll be back. <laughs>